So tonight we're working on unarmed against a sword, something very unusual. We don't practice it too, too much because it's considered very advanced. And it's really scary. If someone was fighting on the battlefield and they didn't have a weapon and I didn't, at least it's fairly even. But if they have a katana or a sword or even a knife and I have nothing, I'm in trouble. We're working on something from the Koto Ryu, which is a higher level achievement. So you start with the basics of the school, then you work up into the higher level scrolls. This is the Heki Togata. Heki means like to break or to tear or split. To means like sword in this case, and gata means like a pattern or a form. It's called Muto Dori, like being without a sword and trying to capture, hopefully, either the weapon or control the person or live and survive. Obviously, the best thing to do is to run, but if your honor was at stake back then, you wouldn't run, you would fight to the death. That's just the way it was. You could call that honorable or cowardly. You can switch anything around, but the beauty of this martial art with the depth of it is we have different sword techniques depending on what period of history we're talking about in Japan. If you have like the, um, the warring states, the Sengoku period, when Japan was fighting itself, like literally civil war strife for a long, long time, they had a different type of sword than they did later in the Edo period where it calmed down and was more peaceful. 1603. Up until then, there was a lot of warring states. And then when the Edo period came in, 1603 to 1868, the swords changed. So this, look at the size of that. This is an Odachi, or some call it no Odachi. This is a giant sword. This is actually not very big. There's a sword, if you look, you can Google it, in the history of Japan from the 15th century that is over 12 feet long <coughs> and like 32 pounds. Or maybe it's massive. It's sitting in a glass case, and they would use that. Usually a sword that big was impossible to use, so they would just give it to someone maybe as a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a token. Maybe the best swordsman in the battle would get one of those swords, but they were more ceremonial than functional. Because even me, I have trouble using this because of the weight of it. That sword would be almost impossible to wield in a battle. But their swords in the older days were really long. Why would they be long, everybody? Horses. You were fighting against cavalry. You couldn't have a small little short sword. You couldn't reach. They're up 9, 10 feet. So this sword would be out. We have techniques to fight against this. Battlefield techniques uh, from the Kukishin Ryu. We have techniques for the shorter swords as well, and the tachi, all of them. So the first thing you need to ask whenever we say at this dojo, we're going to do some sword work, the first question should be, what period of history are you talking about? Are you talking about warring states, peaceful times, modern times, Gendai sword? What, what period? Because then once you know what period you're using, you know what weapons to get, what type of attitude to have, if I'm wearing armor or I'm wearing a kimono with no armor, are we on the street? Are we on horses? Are we on the battlefield? Are we in a castle? All of these factors completely change what we show. It literally determines the, the class techniques. This, I would not carry. I, if you carried this, it would be carried with the blade down. You would carry it in your hand into the battle. They could put it along their back, but you couldn't draw it from here. But if I had smaller swords, I could walk into battle like this with a rope. And then when I'm ready to fight to the death, I would take the rope off, remove the saga, and get ready to fight. That would disappear. You don't need it anymore. You may not go home tonight. Then you would have the length. How long do you think that is? Look at it. Four feet? Five feet. Five feet. Six and a half. Six feet. Almost, almost six, six feet tall. So if you move back, because this is a shinken, what is shinken? Light blade. This is sharp. Move back more. If I have this on the battlefield, would you agree that it's hard to swing? Yes. So you're going to overcompensate. I am strong and I've used these since I was 10, but still when I swing, that's about as fast as I can get with this. If I'm moving here, this is about as quick as you get with this sucker, okay? With the height of the ceiling here, notice how slow 
I look when I'm using this. This is quick, believe it or not, with this. But look at how much time that is. You're like, gosh, that looks slow. Different techniques. If I miss my target, I am going to be open for attack. Do you understand this? Okay, this is a heavy sword. We are not using that tonight. Next one is called a tachi, which is shorter. This isn't an actual tachi, but it looks like it. Hung this way, why? Why did the blade hang down rather than up? Like a katana. A Easier to draw. Easier to draw if you're on horseback. If I am riding a horse, if the blade is up, and this is hugely long, it's, it's unwieldy. The horse's neck is right, very hard to draw. If it's like this and the horse's neck is here, the mane, I can take it like this over my head to draw out without affecting the horse's head. The horse's head's important, you need that. So the blade down it would hang off your hip by straps and it would move on your hip as you're riding through the forest and it would bang against you. And then when you were ready to draw it, you'd have to find it in your armor, and then you'd have to lift it and draw it on the horse and use it. It was longer. Well, what's the difference between the tachi and the katana? The period of its make, the furniture, it was worn blade down. The mei, the signature, was on a different spot in the tang. The signature of the artist who made the sword was always on the outside of the handle. So, a tachi signature of who made the sword would be on this side. If it was a katana, it would be on this side. Little things like that. Length, curvature, furniture. This is for the battlefield states, although it's a bit small. Two, three hundred years of warfare. We have an entire set of katas for this. Then, you go to the katana, shorter, smaller. Now the katana was around during the big swords but it was considered a close combat weapon. Not very practical for battle. Smaller, lighter, maybe not quite as much of a curve. Could be used one or two-handed later in century. Why was it shorter? Didn't need to reach the horseback anymore. You're now walking on the street without the Yoroi armor. So to have these on your belt, this is a typical concealed carry type thing. This is how they walked the samurai. The blade is up now. Went from going down like a pirate to up like a samurai. Because with a shorter blade, I can draw it very easily with the blade up. I don't have to worry about horses anymore. An entire set of techniques in several of our schools dealing with the katana in the Edo period, where you see movies like The Seven Samurai, Last Samurai, all those things. If I'm swinging this sword, I can be using it one-handed, two-handed, anything. It's light. Tonight, we're going to be using something which represents the tachi, a heavier, older sword. We're not going to be using the katana. The techniques that I'm going to show you tonight are, again, from the heki togata, from the koto ryu, where some people call tiger knockdown school, but you should actually think of it as I'm the tiger, and I'm going to fight like one and knock you down. You could twist it though. And again, these are high level katas. You are not going to have a sword, and your friend's going to have one. They're going to come in and cut you down. So you will be scared. In the Takagi Ryoshin Ryu, there's a phrase that says, Paradise is forward, meaning you have to be brave enough to go beyond the sword to paradise. You have to take control. If you keep backing up when they're swinging, you're in trouble. When you get your sword tonight, I don't want to see anyone doing this type of stuff. As soon as you do that, I know you have no clue about swordsmanship. But what do you see in every movie? From Star Wars on, as soon as the guy gets a sword, whether we're tossing a coin to our witcher or whatever, what do they do? They get the sword out and they do this. And the director's like, cool, good shot. This is stupid with a weapon. You cut your ear off. And it shows me no respect. So if you have your katana and you draw it, you go right into kamai. You don't fool around like a three-year-old. This is not a movie. Plus, this is dangerous. It looks cool, but it's junk in a real fight. What good does this do you? What good is this doing? 
Do you think I really look better? No, I look stupid. You look moronic, okay? Yet all of us have done that, and we will continue to, but please don't. In a moment, you're going to have a sword, not a metal one. You'll have a bouquet for safety. These are good to train with. A bokuto, a bokeh, because they're heavy. They'll build your arms up and they make it more realistic so that you can't do this slap tappy stuff. At least with this, you have to commit to your attacks and you're slower. What about the shinai? Well, it's used for kendo, which has been around for quite a long time. It's more of a sport. So you would have armor and bamboo and you would get points. So for me to move forward here, it's very quick. It's not at all realistic kenjutsu. Who's seen kendo before? So you know how they hit with for points and stuff. Do you think on the battlefield I'm going to be able to do this with my sword? No. <laughs> Break your wrists. So we don't use these except to condition our hands. What about this, thank you, modern invention? What do you think? Cool? What do you think? I would say it's more for practicing actually hitting each other rather than defending from the sword itself. Yeah, this is for children. It's for children. This is junk as far as training. Except when you have to do techniques where you know you're going to hit full speed, you can use these. But it has no weight to it. So you're getting false training. I see this in many schools. This to me is child's play. If I see these, unless it's a certain situation, I know that they're not doing kenjutsu with their school. They're playing romper room. This is for kids. This is for little ninjas, little dragons. Open like a door, right? So these we only use under special circumstances when we have to hit full speed so we don't damage our friend. Other than that, you can buy one, have it at home, but do not use it to build muscle or for leg movement or anything else. It is junk, my opinion, okay? They're for kids. Are you ready? Now in a minute we're going to turn the camera off because no one on the internet sees this stuff. It's too... You have to be here to see this. You're going to get a friend and a wooden boat can...